Dear friends, today we are going to <clears throat> have a glimpse of the parameters and factors of sustainable development. You have already been exposed to the nature of sustainable development, its characteristics and indicators and indices of sustainable development in <clears throat> the unit one of the module one. And today we are going to discuss about the parameters of sustainable development and the factors of sustainable development. This is a very significant issue nowadays that when we talk about sustainable development, we must see that what are the dimensions that <coughs> contributes to contributes to sustainability and sustainable development. The basic feature of dimensions of sustainable development is linked to the innovation. The innovative approaches to be linked with the futuristic orientation of life. The second part is the innovation is linked with technology and this is known as technology interventions and technology related innovations to make our futuristic orientation of life a success. And they are linked with sustainability of environment. So environmental preservation and the futures of environment and sustainability is linked with the people's ethics. So <clears throat> all the three dimensions of sustainable development, you know, technology and sustainability of environment, the safe planet on which we live with future generations, is very much linked with our values, our ethics. So people's ethics are very much linked with the sustainability. There are different factors of sustainability called the climate change. That is the first factor. Second factor is environment. Third factor is people, fourth factor is ethics, fifth factor is innovation, and sixth one is technology. Now, we will understand what are these factors and how they are interlinked with each other and contributing to the sustainability in our life with futuristic orientation. First, we'll focus on climate change. Because of <clears throat> unhealthy living system and extreme exploitation of resources, natural resources, the gradual warming of the planet is caused by the greenhouse gases produced by burning of fossil fuels the fossil fuels, the natural resources of generating energy and making use of this energy is going to be a dangerous phenomena for our sustainability. The climate change results in destructive tropical storms, cyclones, heat waves, devastating wildfires and rising of sea level. We come across the cyclones very often on our earth. Human being is solely responsible for making excessive use of fossil fuels, which leads to the greenhouse effect of the earth. So <clears throat> it is not a natural tendency, but it is human intervention that has caused greenhouse effect on the earth and that has led to the climate change. The sustainability is directly linked with exploring the uses of 
renewable energy. So the renewable energy are to be explored in the form of the use of solar energy. Now the time has come that the electric and hybrid vehicles, they are to be used instead of making use of petroleum and petroleum products. This forms the basis of climate sustainability. Second point is about environmental sustainability. Environmental sustainability deals with the preservation of the sanctity of the environment. How to preserve the natural settings of our life and retaining the purity in environment. How to make use of procuring and using tangible natural resources like wood, metal or water as well as generated resources like electricity to sustain our environment is the direct challenge for our survival. This factor is linked with the moderation of species also. So <clears throat> while retaining our species and retaining our flora and fauna, so we will have to maintain the dignity of nature and making use of appropriate natural resources. Our uncontrolled use of natural resources for the sake of economic growth and high level consumption need to be caught. This is the need of the day. And next is the people. So it is we and the, the generation will have to take care of our environment and to adapt environmental sustainability by making use of innovative practices and technology. The human being is responsible for the overuse of natural resources. It is we who make use of natural resources for the sake of development and satisfying the needs of our present day. Development orientation of the present day has destroyed the balance of man and nature. And in this respect, we must be educated and strive for sustainability of human life on earth. The first point is, as per Gandhian principle, our greed for overconsumption of resources needs to be minimized. Our needs and greeds, they are to be balanced. We must learn life skills and how to fit, love and entertain ourselves using sustainable means. So this is a challenge for people and this is a question for people's education and development of ethics. As we know, ethics deals with accountability of individuals towards our own life and others. So ethics are the moral conducts for my own life and my moral conducts to deal with my community, my environment, and the entire globe, that is, especially to the nature, is covered by human ethics. So, we must treat our planet with due respect in view of sustainability and sustainable development. The innovation, as you know, is directly linked with change proneness. The change proneness and innovations must commensurate with sustainability. The change proneness and the innovations should not be at the cost of our futures of life. As species, we must strive for innovations leading to future sustainability. The last point is about the technology. Sustainability is promoted through technology in the era of globalization. Modern age was linked with industrialization, mechanization, but the future's generation is directly linked with technological developments. And sustainability is to be promoted through technological interventions. And the renewable technology needs to be the hour to counter polluting methods of 
energy production. New agricultural technologies must promote crop production with use of fewer resources and it should not be at the cost of the over-exploitation of natural resources and creating pollutants for our nature. So these dimensions are to be covered through sustainable development. Yesterday, we talked about the four pillars of sustainability, namely environment, human, social, and economic. So these four dimensions, the human, social, and economic and environmental dimensions, they are directly linked with the sustainability. The first pillar of sustainability is known as human sustainability. The human sustainability aims to develop and maintain human capital in society. When I say human capital means each and every human being is considered as a source of human capital. Human capital is directly linked with development and use of human capabilities. So every human being must improve his own capabilities her, and make use of her own capabilities for sustainable life. Human sustainability covers investment in our wealth, health and education, our access to services, nutrition and mainly the educational component dealing with development of knowledge and skills. And it also leads to achieving the economic well-being of people in a more inclusive manner. The second part Social sustainability. A larger view of the world is projected in the context of communities, cultures, and globalization. The development focusing on the individualistic needs and desires are just for the sake of satisfying the needs in a particular moment, but when you talk about sustainability, we are talking about a holistic concept of social sustainability where we must work and our work should be linked with future perspectives of society in a more collaborative and communitarian form. The interdependence of economic system, social system, ecological system, are essential features of sustainable development. So we give emphasis on social sustainability. The third dimension is of economic sustainability. As we discussed about the nature of sustainable development, in the context of economic development, we are highlighting about the quality of life and living standard of life. It aims to maintain the capital intact and it aims to improve the standard of living of people in an inclusive form so that each and every human being gets social justice for his own well-being. The fourth pillar is economic sustainability. It aims at protecting environmental sustainability. It aims at protecting and preserving natural capital, land, air, water, minerals, etc., while improving the quality of life of people. The economic sustainability is directly linked with environmental sustainability because it is linked with exploitation of resources for our better life and satisfying the needs. The needs of people must be met without the risk of compromising the needs of future generations. That has been uh, the motto of the sustainable development as have been discussed 
over the last five decades. Now we are talking about the parameters of sustainable development. This is a very interesting area that <coughs> what are the indicators and parameters of sustainable development when we talk about those four pillars. The first part is talking about nature's carrying capacity. We live on earth and earth has its own capacity to carry itself and for regenerations of its own resources. So when we talk about carrying capacity, we are referring to the earth's carrying capacity. The second part is intergenerational equity and justice. The intergenerational equity means we are talking about this life and our future's life, my future's generation. The third is the intra-generation equity and justice. At one particular moment of time, we are spread over different parts of the earth and there are inequity and injustice at a particular stage of life. Gender disparity. We are talking about equity and equality. It is not possible without having discriminatory approach to be abolished on the case of gender. And the last part is plurality, diversity, the differences, the variations that exist on the world in men, in women, in our culture, in our life systems, in our environmental systems. So let us discuss about one by one the <coughs> parameters of sustainable development. The first one is about carrying capacity. Carrying capacity means the average population density or population size of a species below which its number tends to increase and above which its numbers tend to decrease because of shortage of resources. So it talks about a balance between our present generation and future productions. This has been explained by the Encyclopedia of Britannica. When you talk about carrying capacity, we are talking about the environment the number of individuals of a given species that can be sustained indefinitely in a given space. Dear friends, as we know, many species have been wiped out because of this factor on the earth. And we have to preserve and see that how different species cannot be endangered because of unsustainable environment. Carrying capacity of the earth means the ability of the earth to meet the needs of individuals indefinitely. If we consume so much at the present generation of our life and we leave nothing for future generation, that means we are going to cause harm for our future generation and it will create unsustainability. In general, the carrying capacity of an environment is the maximum population size of biological species that can survive sustainably with the resources available for meeting the needs like food, water, air and habitations. So what is the maximum size of our population? Who can live a peaceful and happy life and satisfy their needs and it will not explore to that extent that the sustainability will be challenged. From an environmental perspective, carrying capacity is understood as the environment's maximum load which can withstand human intervention. So to what extent we can load or we can exploit natural resources so that the sustainability 
to the limit up to maximum population of an environment support in terms of ecology, agriculture, fisheries, and different activities with which we have been engaged over ages for sustaining our livelihood on earth. The concept is applied in the context of stable population. Our population should not explode to that extent that our futures will be endangered. The species may be endangered. The earth's carrying capacity is endangered by the use of chemical fertilizers in the case of the green revolution, the insecticides and pesticides in use high yielding varieties of products and the production capacity of land gets decreasing gradually and our productivity is decreased and our demands for food increase and the balance is not maintained. The affluent discharges from industry to rivers, lakes and wetlands cause harm to the carrying capacity of the environment. The pollution, overpopulation, overgrazing, deforestation, urbanization, industrializations are many such factors that contribute to the threat and the unsustainability of the Next, when we talk about the carrying capacity, there is a by Mellards and others the 30 year update of limits to growth that if capacity is endangered, so what will happen? The humans are living beyond the carrying capacity on earth. Human interventions in earth may be approaching a straight shift in its biosphere. Irrespective of diversity in economic growth of countries, whether developed one or backward ones, whether northern or southern sides of our the issues of sustainability. They are trying a major concern and how to retain the carrying capacity of earth and to progress towards the sustainability of life on earth. The second part is intergenerational equity and justice at global, regional and country levels. Here, when I say about intergenerational equity and people of our future's generation, if we consume so much in this generation and we leave little for the future's generation, intergenerational inequity will lead to unsustainability. The Broadland Post had also highlighted in 1972 about such concern. W. E. Brown, in 1992, he said that the people are both beneficiaries and title to use the environment and its resources at the same time as trustees. Trust saves and the custodians of the earth with an obligation to pass it on in no worse condition on balance than that in which and we its sense so that the future's generation will also make use of it without having any problem. So international equity is understood as using Earth's resources between present generations and future generations in a way that the present generation doesn't adjust its consumption and leaves a little for future generations. It entails fairness and justice for the use of environment and natural resources in a balanced manner. So, what we use in this generation 
said, we should leave things for our future. The criteria of intergenerational equity means the intergenerational equity neither authorizes unreasonable exploitation on natural resources by the present generation, not do they impose unreasonable burdens on the nature. Second point is that do not provide flexibility to the future generation to make unreasonable use of natural resources to achieve their own goals. So, we should not provide the scope that the future generations will not have things for their own, meeting their own needs. So, we should make reasonably its application so that we should meet our future needs. Be reasonably shared. Resources should be able to do different economic and political protection resources see economic development. Now, let us see what the United Nations Conference on Human Environment, which was held in Stockholm in 1972, the principles that entailed that the natural resources of earth, including the air, water, land, flora, and, and especially representative samples of the natural resources must be safeguarded for the benefit of the present. Through careful planning, our uh, management talked about careful planning and management that even major emphasis in this direction. Of this <coughs> convention, the Rio Declaration 1992 that declared the right to development must be fulfilled so as to equitably meet developmental and environmental needs of present and future generations. The United States framework for convention on climate change, it declared the parties should protect the climate system of the benefit of present and future generations of humankind on the basis of equity and in accordance with their common but differentiated responsibility. It also declared Recognizing that each and every person has the right to live on an environment accurate to his or her health and well being, and the duty both individually and with others to protect and improve the environment for the benefit of present and future generations. The Copenhagen Declaration 2009. That is, United Nations Climate Change Conference made a declaration about equitable social development and social justice. Now, we will have to see about another component of equity and justice of our generations that is known as intragenerational equity and justice. Intragenerational Equity means the fairness in utilization of resources among individual society of present generation and country as well as at the global level. So we talk about disparities that exist from place to place from region to region, and from nation to nation. The intergenerational conflicts have been witnessed between the developed and developing countries in terms of exploitation of natural resources and their consumption pattern. The northern industrialized countries, the southern countries, developed countries, have exploited the enormous resources of 
developing countries. This has adversely impacted the value of natural resources of poor countries and, and the regeneration capabilities of the nature have been exploited to a large extent by these developed countries. Because of north-south polarization means developed countries and developed countries polarization, the debate took place on the action of they should make use of this appropriate amount of natural resources as the cost of sustainability of environment. This has caused a lot of harm to the environment in the form of ozone depletion, global warming, loss of biodiversity, and deforestation. Their friends, only 50% population of the world, making use of the energy systems and leaving a lot for ozone depletions and because of their exploitations, the whole world suffers and climate change takes place. In such cases, the disparities that take place and we have witnessed that when COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the current conflicts that took place between Russia and Ukraine war, such crisis at global level of economic growth is also shrinking. The developed countries going for war, making use of nuclear weapons and creating a threat to our environment and to our futures of life and cause the outlook of G20 countries have been declined sharply. This year we are holding G20 meet at India. And the high inflation rate is persisting all over the world and particularly because of the market economy. The OCD outlook report for September 22 and also I was reading in 23, it states that the global economy has darkened. The report has given a warning on the following report. The world economy is slowing more than anticipated. Inflation has become more widespread. Demand reduction and diversification are needed to avoid such things. The intergenerational equity in terms of the global, it also leads to the urban and rural division. Because of creation of cities and the mega cities, we are going for concentrating on over of resources at urban areas and the resources are being exploited from rural areas. <clears throat> High level of consumption in industrial countries are alarming to the sustainability of the environment. The reduced sustainable patterns of production and consumption. We do not have a sustainable pattern of consumption, unsustainable pattern of consumption consuming a lot and depending a lot on exploitation of resources and it is going to affect the economic output at a large scale. The world economy indicates high unemployment rates in the era of market economy. The worst hit inflation is badly affecting progressive like Germany, UK, USA, Canada, China, India and Japan. Hence there is an urgency to reduce the demand and diversify the supply of resources. The third part is the gender disparity. In developed countries or developing countries, I find one common point is that, that is the gender gap or disparities of men and women. As long as we go for such kind of disparity and discrimination and the male domination, predomination on the women, this is going to be a global phenomena of unsustainability. Here, if you say that the gender disparity or social inequity is going to cause unsustainability, social equity is an indicator 
of sustainable development. In this direction, we will have to see that how the capability of women or the girl child is to be so it is the mission of sustainable development through the development of capability, the girl child or the women they can enjoy freedom, they can make free choice and they can contribute significantly towards the development in inclusive form. When we focus on the gender disparity across the world that roughly women in the world are living in poverty. Even though efforts are made to health and educational opportunities to go and affairs is quite marginal from the representative of women in democratic systems and in public governance systems. Social constraints of women's sex abuse, domestic violence, etc., particularly among backwards and the Dalits, that has been a very much common all over the world. When I say the gender disparity, the different needs and aspirations of boys and girls met equally with emphasis on development of women as per their own capabilities and preferences. As you know, men and women are not the same, but the women must have their own identity. They must identities, the rights and responsibilities and opportunities. They should not be discriminated against because of their sex. Gender must focus on fairness of treatment of men and women. In the context of political participation, in a male-centric politics, as we see in our parliament or in our assemblies, what is the representative percentage of women in there? Fortunately, in the Panchayati Raj system, we had 33% reservation for women in rural decision-making practices. Uh, so this should be challenged by women's participation in public life and their decision-making practices. Now, the last part we will talk about multiculturalism, pluralism and diversity. Our world, the earth, is one planet, but it is full of pluralities, multidisciplinarities. Global life is pluralistic in nature. Most of the countries of the world are also considered plural in context of their culture, language, religion, race, and people of different cultures, religions, and races, they live together in the globe. The social and cultural of the world is well recognized with the presence of ethnic groups all over the world. As the country ability depends on the non-discrimination of people in respect of their race, sex, religion, language, and faith. Diversity that exists must survive and doesn't perish. Multiculturalism lies on the belief many cultures exist in society and rich lives and contribute to develop our understanding philosopher, the Indian philosopher, Professor Dukhupai, he stated that multiculturalism contributes to overall richness of society. Oil Milka stated that diverse cultures provide substantive options and choices. Plurality gives us the opportunities for making choice and decision making. 
multicultural society people explore alternatives and they decide about what is good and what is desirable for us and as per our needs and expectations from our lives. Sustainable development insists on multiculturalism as a deeply cherished value of human life on the planet. Multiculturalism is not understood as a mere existing of plural values or pluralities in social science, social life, rather it permits each and every individual to follow the value framework of the culture of which he belongs. And local values and identities need not be submerged in the context of <coughs> uniformity, nationality or global life. They should not be linked with the centralized factors, rather, dictated by centralized factors, rather they should retain their identity and they should identify and they should be empowered to identify that what is good for them and to make decisions about it. When you talk about multiculturalism and pluralism, we are talking about indigenousity, indigenous value system, indigenous culture, and the community and communities have a wider role to preserve our environment, to make use of value systems and our knowledge systems and the skills which we have inherited over the lakhs of years of our living on the earth and how to maintain it and to play a wider role in environmental management and development because of the people's knowledge and traditional practices. In this context, it has been declared by Rio Convention that every nation state should duly recognize and support their identity, culture, and interest of people and enable their effective participation in achievement of sustainable development. So in this sense, we must encourage plurality, we must encourage diversity, we must recognize the identity of each culture, and we must make use of indig indigenous culture and knowledge system and integrate with technology and innovative practices for sustainable of life on the earth. Thank you very much.